В связи с этим мною приняты следующие решения. Первое. По моему поручению Министерство обороны России незамедлительно введет в боевой состав радиолокационную станцию системы предупреждения о ракетном нападении в городе Калининграде. Второе. В рамках создания системы воздушно-космической обороны России в первоочередном порядке будет усилено прикрытие объектов стратегических ядерных сил. Третье. Стратегические баллистические ракеты, которые поступают на вооружение ракетных войск стратегического назначения и нашего военно-морского флота, будут оснащаться перспективными комплексами преодоления ПРО и новыми высокоэффективными боевыми блоками. Четвертое. Вооруженным силам мною поставлена задача по разработке мер, обеспечивающих при необходимости разрушение информационных и управляющих средств системы ПРО. Указанные меры являются адекватными, эффективными и малозатратными. Пятое. Если перечисленных мер будет недостаточно, Российская Федерация разместит на Западе и на юге страны современные ударные системы вооружений, обеспечивающие огневое поражение европейского компонента ПРО. Одним из таких шагов станет развертывание ракетного комплекса «Искандер» в Калининградском особом районе. Будут подготовлены, а по мере необходимости, реализованы и другие мероприятия по противодействию европейской составляющей американской противоракетной обороны. Далее. При неблагоприятном развитии ситуации Россия оставляет за собой право отказаться от дальнейших шагов в области разоружения и, соответственно, контроля над вооружениями. Кроме того, учитывая неразрывную взаимосвязь между стратегическими наступательными и оборонительными вооружениями, могут возникнуть основания для выхода нашей страны из договора об СНВ. Это предусмотрено самим смыслом договора. Тем не менее, еще раз хотел бы подчеркнуть, мы не закрываем дверь ни для продолжения диалога с Соединенными Штатами и Североатлантическим Альянсом по вопросам противоракетной обороны, ни для практического сотрудничества в данной сфере. Мы к этому готовы. Однако путь к такой работе лежит через создание четкой правовой базы нашего взаимодействия. Такой базы, которая обеспечит учет наших законных интересов. Мы открыты к диалогу и рассчитываем на разумный и конструктивный подход со стороны наших западных партнеров. This statement is a wake-up call to anyone that is not taking seriously the warnings that Mr. LaRouche has made repeatedly of the imminent threat of thermonuclear World War III. Back on October 29th, Mr. LaRouche warned of the Middle East as the New Balkans and described how the trigger point had been carefully set up and that as the fuse is burning down on the financial resources to carry out that operation, the time for that operation to be launched or defeated is now. The insane drive for war by Obama's British controllers is not simply targeted at Syria and Iran, but rather at Russia and China and at the ultimate destruction of the United States. These three nations, as proposed by Mr. LaRouche, working together towards the common good of mankind, are an unstoppable force that can wipe the oligarchical principles of the British Empire from the planet. These three nations, acting together, can place the world monetary system through bankruptcy reorganization and reestablish the legacy of Franklin Roosevelt for a world system of credit for economic development and hence return man to his rightful place as a creative being. This is the threat that the empire is out to crush. And with the European Monetary Union situation careening out of control, the push to get World War III moving immediately before the money runs out is the empire's goal. When you look at Medvedev's November 23rd statement from that standpoint, you realize that Russia is moving for a war avoidance strategy. 
Each step of the way, as the U.S. NATO operations have been fueling the flames for war, Russia has been working to put out the fire. And after seeing that what was done in Libya, Russia will not sit idly by and watch a similar scenario play out in Syria. On November 1st, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov declared that Russia supported the efforts of the Arab League to resolve the Syrian crisis, but then clearly took aim at the warmongering from the British-French-U.S. crew, which ran the operation in Libya, saying, We advocate an approach which, among others, is applied in Yemen. There was an initiative of the Cooperation Council for the Arab State of the Gulf, and everyone, be it the Council itself, the Arab League, the EU, U.S., Russia, or China, acted responsibly without setting artificial deadlines, waiting for months until the goal was achieved. Isolation is not our approach. If something goes wrong in Syria, many countries of the region will feel a negative impact. We can't support isolation because of the lesson we drew from Libya. Later, on November 11th, Lavrov made the point that Russia knows games are being played to start a war that would spread much further than the supposed nations targeted. We are concerned with news of ongoing aggressions by extremist gunmen, such as those which took place in Homs, Hama, and Iblib in recent days, with the provocative aim of forcing security agencies and the army in Syria to retaliate, and then launching a campaign via international media outlets. General Makarov, the chief of staff of the Russian armed forces, told a Kremlin advisory body that, in certain circumstances, local and regional armed conflicts could grow into a large-scale war, possibly even with nuclear weapons, and that Russia could be involved. As well-known Russian journalist and member of the public chamber, Maxim Shevchenko, commented on Medvedev's November 23rd speech, it has been stated clearly and firmly that we need to arm ourselves and that there is a direct threat of war against the Russian Federation and that the threat comes from NATO, not from Iran or North Korea. Within days of Medvedev's address, the Russian Navy confirmed that several battleships from Russia's northern fleet are embarking on a long-range cruise to a Russian support facility at Tardis, Syria. Russian Admiral Valentin Selivanov said of the vessel's crews, if somebody's ships are located somewhere, of course, it's not possible to simply fly over them and bomb someplace. Even the Americans will not be able to ignore the arrival of our ships off the coast of Syria. Although, probably, our only aircraft carrier, plus the Shabanyanko, do not have the ability to stop an entire war, but their appearance in the eastern Mediterranean will be a signal to the whole world that Russia has interests here, and you can't just crush, destroy, and kill everybody without taking them into account. Former Russian Navy Chief of Staff, Admiral Viktor Kravchenko, echoed the same call on November 27th. President Medvedev, via his November 23rd address to the nation, coupled with Russia's most recent deployment of three warships into the Mediterranean, is making it known that this threat of war is real and that actions must be taken to stop it. Lyndon LaRouche has made it very clear that the way to stop it is to remove President Obama from office immediately. The British are controlling Obama as their puppet. They are engineering the crisis in Europe to impose dictatorships, and they are behind the wars and threats of global thermonuclear war. They know that their entire transatlantic financial and monetary system is dead. They know that the leading nations of the Asia-Pacific region, Russia, China, India, Japan, and the Koreas, are growing relative to the rapid transatlantic disintegration. This is totally unacceptable from the British standpoint, and so they are using their puppet Obama to prepare for the United States to use nuclear weapons in a global conflict already set in motion in the new cockpit for war, the Persian Gulf and Eastern Mediterranean region. By removing President Obama, you pull the plug on the British plan for thermonuclear war. It is understood in many official layers across the globe that the world is heading for war. Even here in the United States, top military layers are opposing it. A source from the Pentagon has reported of a recent discussion between President Obama and two of his most senior generals 
over the threat of a general war that would be triggered by an Israeli attack on Iran. The source reports that the generals conveyed personally to the president that it is the consensus of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, CENTCOM, and all of the other top military brass that the Israelis must be told in absolute clear terms that any military attack on Iran is thoroughly unacceptable and would likely lead to world war. President Obama's response was simply that the U.S. has no control over Israeli policy, and if Israel is going to attack Iran, it would be better for us not to know in advance. The immediate threat of thermonuclear World War III is real, but it is not enough to simply warn against it. You must prevent it. You won't have the opportunity after the war to say, see, I told you so, because you'll be dead. This is not about what will happen to this nation or that nation. This is about what will happen to the entire human species. A world war today means thermonuclear war. It means the elimination of the majority of the human species from the face of the planet. And it is President Barack Obama that is driving us towards that point. Do we dare let the decision of thermonuclear war lie in the hands of a criminally insane individual? Why are we tolerating a criminally insane president when the 25th Amendment to the Constitution provides for a president's immediate removal for off from office for precisely the circumstances that we now face? The only move that will totally disarm the threat of World War III, the instant that it is taken, is the use of the 25th Amendment, which will immediately remove President Obama from making the decisions. Russia is warning us that this threat is real. Let's take Obama's finger off the button.